Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KON Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. The show is made possible by the McPherson Tax Defense Group, 1-800-BEAT-IRS, beatirs.com. We have online with us Dr. Williams Briggs. He's a writer, philosopher, itinerant scientist living on a small but densely populated island in the Atlantic Ocean, as we discovered last time. That's Manhattan Island. Earned his Ph.D. from Cornell in statistics. He remains an adjunct professor there. Studies the philosophy of science, the use and misuses of uncertainty, the corruption of science, and that's kind of where we're headed today, talking about this recent revelation that zapping brains with magnets can treat that troubling belief in God. Dr. Briggs, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me back. So, entertaining story. Magnets apparently can treat that disorder of believing in God, and incidentally, they treat another disorder. That's the claim, anyway. The claim is that uh, a sufficiently powerful magnet aimed at the exact center of your brain, which is responsible for your belief in God and your attitude towards immigrants, can change those beliefs. Uh, now, now, they probably don't tell you that, that it also screws up your ability to add 2 plus 2, right? <laughs> they didn't test for that, and it probably doesn't <laughs> even do that. It probably doesn't even do what they claim. Uh, that's part of the problem. It's a very complicated study. It's, it's based on a handful of undergraduate students. They paid him each 25 bucks, only 38. They split him into two groups. Uh, one group got blasted by this uh, magnet, and the other group got blasted too, but at a lower setting. And they asked him, do you believe in God? They asked him to rate on a numerical scale, do you believe in God? Do you believe in the devil? And they asked him to look at these uh, essays that were ostensibly written by immigrants. One was written by an immigrant. It was a very pro-USA article. And the second was written by an immigrant, they said. And it was very anti-USA. And so people's ratings of this fellow who supposedly wrote this anti-USA article were somewhat negative. And that they turned into the idea that people are anti-immigrant. Hey, just out of curiosity, same scores for belief in devil as the belief in God. Did they slip equally, or, or did the study show? They, they, they only gave, uh, no, they don't have that level of detail. They don't provide that kind of stuff. Because the only thing that they showed, that, 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 first of all, there's this idea of pseudo-quantification. They have these hideously complex, complex human emotions, like people's belief in God. And they try to assign a numerical measure to that. And they also did the same thing for people's belief in devils. Now, the two sort of go hand in hand with Christianity, at least. And the majority of people in this country are Christian, or at least post-Christian. So it's very difficult to tease out what's happening. They only showed a a small, very minor, fractional difference uh, in the belief in God, but not the belief in the devil. So you could just as well say that this uh, doesn't do anything to people's belief in demons and the devil. And it showed a very small change in uh, uh, attitudes towards immigrants. But that's not the thing. The, the, the real troubling aspect of this is why would they do such a study? Right. And there's two yeah. reasons, really. And the Go first ahead. is that, uh, that academics, academia, is largely populated by progressives, leftists. Everybody knows this. It's not even a secret. And they're always wondering why people aren't like them. And so the second reason is there's become a huge industry and trying to explain the origins of religious belief. So they're always putting it down to things like either evolution caused some people to believe in God, or the brain itself is somehow causing people to believe in God, while, whereas people with more advanced and more enlightened brains uh, are less likely to believe in God. Well, part of the troubling aspect of this is kind of the underlying concern that something like this could be used to treat disorders. There's this increasing undertone that you're, I've seen a number of articles over the last several months implying or suggesting that those that, for example, hold traditional views on family have some sort of mental disorder, homophobia, for example, having some sort of a component that is a psychological disturbance of sorts. Do you see this as having any connection to that increasing tendency of some on the left to try to characterize those of traditional values as needing treatment? It's not only I that see this. It's the authors of this study we're talking about. They make that very statement in their paper. What they're trying to do, they say, is to identify mechanisms or means to uh, identify religious people who might commit, in their words, zealous acts 
people who are predisposed to believe in God and therefore might do something that's in line with that belief that they don't like. And they thought they could somehow find these people in advance, and that might lead to... They didn't use the word treatment, but they hinted around it broadly enough. And, and like, like you said, this study is one of hundreds of similar such studies. This isn't the only one. There's many of them, and all of them seek to pathologize either uh, standard traditional Christian beliefs, belief in God, or uh, conservative beliefs. I mean, these studies come out at a rate of about once a month. It's troubling in, on so many different levels. Yet the efforts of those that are pushing back against traditionalists, it's aggressive on so many different levels, professional licensing, of course, in the law, other areas, family, for example. Uh, now, of course, with the whole transgendered push, I sit back and look at this and hear these criticisms that those with traditional views somehow are disturbed mentally. I mean, the whole of history then has been disturbed mentally, right? I mean, the vast majority of human recorded history has been traditionalist with respect to the family. But just now, you know, we've suddenly discovered the problem, apparently. That's exactly it. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, there were societies, uh, Soviet Russia, China, for instance, in which people were sent to re-education camps uh, for holding p uh, positions that were more traditional. And has that not happened here, too? You're speaking of uh, so-called gay marriage. And uh, the judges in these, uh, in the Baker case, in, uh, the, the Bakers, rather, in Colorado, he ordered them to go to sensitivity training. He ordered the Bakers, he ordered the employees to go so that they would have a more enlightened view. You're not allowed to hold the Christian view, no matter what Justice Kennedy said in his strange opinion. You're, you have to hold the view that these judges want you to hold. If not, they'll try to re-educate you. You're involved in science. You read this stuff more than the average person. You know, I mentioned reading a few articles that suggested this move toward identifying people with traditional values as being disturbed psychologically. Give us kind of a feel for the rapidity of change. I mean, how you see this moving forward and at what pace? Oh, my, it, it's, it's intensifying. Just today uh, in this uh, online magazine, I won't even point out the magazine. I don't even want people to look it up. But it's a very well-known popular magazine. They had a long article talking about how uh, being a Christian, being a, uh, I think it was an evangelical Christian, sort of makes one mentally ill. The demands that it causes, the, the changes that it makes in the brain, this stuff is increasingly common. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to sort of bring back eugenics even in a way because they're identifying what they say are biological constituents for belief. Therefore, they're able to test for these biological constituents that might make one more altruistic or one might make one more open to sexual experimentation. You think I'm joking. Your readers might think I'm sort of being paranoid making this up. But no, this is exactly it. There was a story this week, too, just talking about the acceleration, that some employers are now asking for DNA samples, not just to detect, to detect medical or potential medical maladies, but to look for these kind of character traits they think they have identified that make one a, a lesser person. When you look at the U.S. Constitution, the American political exp experiment, based upon this idea of free exercise, faith, God, I mean, they've got to separate all this stuff out in order for them to carry on their agenda of just no parameters on sexual acts uh, or behavior, you know, the whole transgender crowd. I mean, they see their main opponent as being those of faith. And so, obviously, they're going to use any aggressive tactics they can to move forward that agenda. This is still minority opinion, though, right, in, in psychiatry and elsewhere? I'd say no. I don't think it's minority opinion anymore. That's frightening. Dr. William Briggs, I appreciate it. We'll get up your story with the podcast later today. Scientists claim zapping brains with magnets can treat belief in God and also anti-illegal alien attitudes. Interesting read. Thanks again, Dr. Briggs, for being with us. Thanks for having me again. Stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages.